So, my sister deserved it all. But what I'm about to tell you is a story about how I sent her to jail for basically stealing my entire inheritance. I believe you already know by the title, yeah, I sent my sister to jail. But before you're quick to make a judgment about me, I didn't send her to jail because of all the bad things she's done. But as the story unfolds, you'll understand my reasoning. There's a bit of a story about our history that you need to know. It was during the year of 1999 that my parents passed away. After their death, my sister Mary and I became orphans. Mary was 19 years old back then and had already moved out. Since we had no other family members, Mary became my legal guardian and took hold of all the money my parents had left behind for us. Immediately after the death, Mary moved back to our parents' house. At the age of 12, I suffered from depression. I don't blame my sister, even though my therapist reasoned that one of the main reasons for my depression was obviously because of the neglect and abuse from my sister. It still breaks my heart when I think about that particular moment. It was just the day after my parents. I was still crying when they dug my parents' coffin deep down into the soil of the graveyard. I expected Mary to hug me and tell me that she would be there for me, but my heart just broke into a thousand pieces when she did the exact opposite. She grabbed my hand, shook me, and told me to quit crying in a loud voice. Well, I wiped my eyes and followed her. I got into her pickup truck and sat between her punk friends. Why did you bring her along? One of the friends asked. I looked at my sister who replied, Where else should I leave this gutter? I kept quiet, just glaring outside the window, hoping to reach home soon. My heart still feels heavy, and I knew everything would be different as soon as I reached home. But I whispered to myself, saying everything will be fine, then I sank into my seat with sadness, and I just stared at the empty lawn of my house. Dad had his rocking chair, and every time I came back from school, he'd be rocking in that chair. My eyes filled with tears. Get out of that car, you junk. My sister would yell. The surrounding looked blurry with my tears filling up my eyes and I could barely walk straight. A wave of pain rolled through me and I let out a gasp into the air. Mom! I screamed and ran inside to my room. I glanced at her family picture on the wall and it was the three of us and we looked very happy and full of life. I hugged the phono, tightly, to my chest and I just cried my heart out. I must have fallen asleep while crying because when I woke up, it was already dark outside. I was so tired that my body felt really weak and I hadn't had anything since the morning so I was also starving. I tried to open my bedroom door but someone had locked me in from the outside. I banged on the door several times and even called out to my sister but no one came. However, I could hear my sister laughing and talking loudly with her friends. Honestly, she didn't even care about my parents' death. I mean, why would she even care about them? After all, it was also her fault that my parents died, which I'll let you know about soon. Let me finish this part of the story first. So, since the door was locked from the outside, I was forced to stay inside my bedroom. When the sun rays hit my face in the morning, I decided to call my neighbor for help. The neighbor rushed towards my house and got me out. Now, when I think about it, it must have been the vivid, dark circles, swollen eyes, dried lips, and pale face that made the neighbor concerned about me. I was hungry. As soon as I got out, I began to eat whatever was in sight. My sister, well, she was still asleep. There were bottles of whiskey and cigarette buds laying around the home. My mom would never kept the house like this, never this dirty. I said to myself and just began cleaning the mess of a home. Just as I'd finished cleaning, my sister came out. She looked at me with disappointment and asked, Who got me out of the room? It became clear to me that she was the one who had locked me outside. I felt quiet, emotional, and started to miss my parents again. Now, make us all a good breakfast, she demanded, slamming my parents' bedroom door. 
Mom never allowed me inside the kitchen because she thought it wouldn't be safe and kids were only supposed to play and study. Wiping away my tears, I looked out for the milk from the fridge and cereals from the pantry. There was only enough for one person, but I gave it to my sister and I had some leftover food from the day before. It was the last meal made by my mother. I enjoyed every bite of it feeling so emotional. Just as I was finishing the porridge, my sister came out of nowhere and slammed the bowl to the ground. I was devastated. I stared at her. Her eyes were fuming with rage and her face looked red as blood. Her face horrified me. I began to tremble in great fear and I said make breakfast for all of us and look at you eating by yourself. She screamed in this loud voice. Well, for years the kind of behavior continued and escalated and my sister would beat me, mentally harass me, and well, even forbid me from going to school. Which was definitely one of the worst things that she did. She would also invite her friends over and they would not mind passing jokes or making fun of me while they stayed at her house. As time passed by, I fell into depression. I had no one to talk to and would spend hours talking to my parents at the photo frame until the day my sister slammed the photo frame and threw it away. She was everything worse than you could ever imagine. However, Mary wasn't always like that, no. She did love me when we were small, but the influence over her friends changed her into some sort of demonic demon. She moved out of our house because she was fed up living with her life of old people and stupid disgraces like me. According to her, <laughs> my parents even supported her financially, but she was never grateful. My parents paid for her education, rent, and food, and even bought her a pickup truck. Going back to the story, years after my parents' death were as miserable as you can possibly imagine. Every day would bring chaos into my life, and it seemed as though Mary had pledged to turn my life outside, well, in any manner possible. You would be surprised to know she even went on to sell all the furniture and valuable items inside the home, living behind just a bed. Kitchen, stove, and wardrobe. I remember that day vividly, not only because it was the day before my 16th birthday, but also because that day would change my life forever. Update number one. Well, I abruptly woke up with a loud bang at my door. I promptly got up to see who it was, and there were two strangers, one lady and a man. They looked like husband and wife to me, and they seemed to be as confused as I was. What are you doing at our house? The lady asked firmly, but politely. This is my house, I replied to them in a soft voice. Hearing my reply, the couple glanced at each other and showed me the contract. It had been four years since I've gone to school, so it was quite difficult for me to read, to be honest. They felt bad for me because they knew children of my age had to be going to school every single day. Nevertheless, they read out the terms of the contract and explained to me in simpler terms. But frankly speaking... Only one sentence got through to me and undoubtedly hit me like an absolute brick. Your house has been sold to us. Well, I couldn't really believe the words that they said, and they said, The sweat dripped from my brow as they said those words, and soon enough a few men began to unload the new couple's stuff inside my home. No way, this can't be true. I again tried to reintegrate... I could tell the lady felt really bad for me, so she came close to me, squatted down, and tried to console me, saying that Mary Antonio had sold the house to them a week ago and had taken some time off to sell the furniture and fully sell the home. Talk about being stingy and ruthless. Well, the lady really doesn't care about anyone's feelings and emotions but hers, and my heart ached as I understood that my own sister sold my parents' house. I tried to confront the new owners once again saying I had no idea that this home had been sold and I need to speak to my sister before you move in. The new owners indeed felt really terrible for me, but there was nothing they could do. They said their hands were tied. After all, Mary had already left the country. Well, I began to cry nervously. 
I was in great denial, so the lady began to dial up somebody's number. I patiently waited until the person arrived. She was Miss Jones, a lawyer whose focus was on child rights. Miss Jones had a tall and slender figure. From her dress up, one could easily tell that she was a lawyer. She was wearing a black blazer, gray colored corduroy pants, and a white turtleneck. Hi, she uttered and came close to me, almost trying to hug me and sent like. I was feeling miserable and didn't even want to respond back to her. Other than that, I also didn't like people talking to me while coming close to my face. So I remained quiet for some time, until Miss Jones told me there was something important that she wanted to tell me. Your inheritance paper, which I got from the local county, tells me that it's your 16th birthday today, kiddo. It's certainly not going to be a good gift for your birthday, but obviously truth. Well, truth hurts. Miss Jones uttered, and I was so nervous to hear what she was about to say. My heart had already broken several times the same day, and there wasn't much more my heart could even handle. Miss Jones began to continue. Your parents passed away, and ever since then, your sister has been taking care of you as your legal guardian, am I correct? Well, I nodded my head and patiently listened to Miss Jones. Well, being your legal guardian, your sister took in the guardianship of your inheritance. Bear in mind that legal guardianship only lasts until you're 16 years of age, which explains a lot about why your sister just left you. And the other thing is this. I've reconfirmed, and with the county and the bank, your inheritance has been spent by your sister for your upbringing and quality of life, which you clearly don't seem to have received. This is all I have to tell you. The rest is up to you. Do you want to sue your sister? Legally, you could. Well, my heart was racing as Miss Jones finished her sentence. My sister not only abused me, but also managed to swipe away my inheritance. And honestly, I don't care about money or property. Those things hold very less value in my life as compared to ethics and morality. I always knew Mary was not that kind of person I'd admire, but I certainly did not know she would go to the extent and make me want to hate her. I told Miss Jones that I didn't want to do anything to her, but I also requested that if she could manage to find me a place to stay and enroll me in a public school, I would forever be indebted. As I was speaking to Miss Jones, I noticed the new house owners, Bob and Martha, looking at me teary-eyed. They had just lost their daughter of about the same age as me and were going through a very rough patch in their life. You can stay with us till you find yourself a place to sleep, Martha blurted. I became extremely emotional hearing her words and tears began to drip down my face uncontrollably. And Martha and Bob hugged me tight. They were also weeping. It looked like a crying frenzy, to be honest. Update number two. Hey guys, if you think the first update was a little crazy, wait till you read this update. This will definitely take you to a whole different level after losing everything that I've had. I decided I was in charge of my own life. I had to take a stand for myself. Martha and Bob were kind enough to send me to school and hire a tuition teacher and a therapist to heal me mentally from the trauma that I've suffered. A month passes by, and I was continuously talking to Miss Jones about shifting to an orphanage, or care home, until I was legally able to work and earn a living. One night after having dinner, Miss Jones told me that she found a place for me to live. Although I was very happy, I knew that a piece of me wanted to be with Martha and Bob. Honestly speaking, they are the only ones that have loved me selflessly ever since I've lost my parents, and I could tell that they loved me a lot and wanted the best for me. In a short span of time, we three had bonded so well, and it's quite surprising to me that even my own blood happened to disown and neglect me while a complete stranger opened up their home and heart to me. The day to leave finally came, and Miss Jones was outside our door waiting with a handful of papers and a pen. Can I come in, or are you guys going to leave me here standing? <laughs> she asked jokingly. Martha asked her to come inside and brought her a cup of tea. 
All four of us sat on the sofa, and then Miss Jones put her papers in front of the table. I was once again thankful to Martha and Bob because I was able to read through the papers. Why don't you read this out for us, Miss Jones asked me. Well, I took the paper in my hand and read it about. It was my adoption papers. Yes, Martha and Bob are trying to adopt me. I began to cry and so did my new parents. I've never imagined that I would find someone as loving as them. Even though they did not give birth to me, their love was no different than that of my own parents. It was really a very emotional moment that I carry close to my heart. Mom? Dad? I said those words first time in years. Well, after that day, life seemed to be getting better and better for me. After high school, I made up my mind to go to law school and become a judge. My main motive behind that was to fight for rights and be provide the needy with justice. Bob and Martha supported my dream and sent me to study in an ABA-approved law school. My grades were good too, so I got selected for one of the prestigious Ivy Leagues with a 50% merit scholarship. My parents were really happy for me and so were we. It was a five-hour journey from my hometown to college, and as I sat on the airplane up above the clouds, I took out the picture of my own parents and my new parents. My eyes filled up. Thank you, Mom and Dad, for sending Bob and Martha. I whispered as tears flowed down my cheek. All at once, my parents' tragedy came in front of my eyes, and it was all her fault. I whispered to myself. Update number three. As I mentioned to myself earlier, Mary had not always been like that, but after she changed, she became someone that no one could even imagine. I remember that night like it was yesterday. Mary had already moved out of the house, and the three of us were sitting together waiting for the pizza that Dad ordered. It was actually my parents' anniversary, so when the doorbell rang, I rushed to the door to get the pizza. However, I was quite short and couldn't reach the doorknob. My dad giggled, carried me so that we could open it. As soon as I unlocked the door, someone barged inside with full force, causing dad and me to fall. It was my sister. Dad got up and asked my sister, what's wrong with her? But she didn't speak. Instead, she rushed to mom and began to get violent. Why did you do that? Who gave you that permission? She asked in a high-pitched voice, and Mary looked absolutely furious. My mom tried her best to calm her down, but there was no way that she would hold herself back. Instead, she got even more angrier with every passing second. Dad tried to interrupt and ask what was happening, but Mary angrily pushed Dad away so badly that Dad began to bleed from his forehead. My mom rushed towards my dad and feared something terrible would happen, but Mary pulled mom's hand and shoved her onto the ground. I was horrified and began to hide underneath the table, watching my sister just hurt my parents. My parents were soon uncautiously lying on the ground. This is what happens when you ask my friends to stay away from me. She yelled and began to kick my parents in their chest. Minutes passed by, but none of them woke up. Mary began to panic and pushed them down the balcony, making it seem like an accident. While I sat there witnessing everything, I was shivering uncontrollably and I was still young and naive at the time, so I couldn't really do anything about it. I kept telling myself that whatever I saw at the time was nothing but my imagination deep down. I knew that it was Mary who had murdered my parents and framed it to be self-harm. I never had the courage to confront Mary, and I kept this hidden until I got married to my best friend Anthony, who was deployed into the army. Life with Anthony was amazing, he loved me a lot, and we were ready to start our own little family. However, once again life began to test my fate. Anthony had gone to one of the peacekeeping missions in South Sudan and had severely injured himself. This is why I'd like to stress the fact that life is unexpected and it can change any time in the blink of an eye. Anthony had severely injured himself and could no longer be deployed into the army. However, the government did take care of him and his treatment and decided to give him monthly monetary stipend. 
Life was scary in those days. My parents were my support pillar during the times. They helped me to stay positive and came to stay at my house while I was going through it all. Had it not been for them, I would have never been able to manage myself during such a dark period of my life. Just the way that there's no rainbow without a bit of rain. Good things finally started to happen in my life and Anthony soon recovered. Soon good things started happening once again. Anthony finally recovered and was soon discharged from the hospital while I became a judge in the local court system. My hard work had paid off and my dream finally came true. My parents hosted a big party for me at their home so Anthony and I both stayed there for the night. However, my parents had to go somewhere important the next morning so... Anthony took them out while I lazily slumbered onto bed. Even though Anthony continuously told me to lock the doors from the inside, I was too sleepy and just forgot to do so. All of a sudden, someone barged inside my house and began to run around. I abruptly woke up from my sleep and rushed downstairs. A woman with blonde curly hair was running around trying to hide underneath the table. Who are you? I screamed in a loud voice. The lady came out from the table. Sweat was dripping down her forehead and thick red blood covered on her hands. Who are you? Screamed again. I I've, I've killed my boyfriend, but, but it was self-defense. Please save me. There's also no evidence I heard him just like the last time. She uttered, and all at once my body became cold. Not because I heard the lady say that she killed her boyfriend, I've heard plenty of murder cases in my lifetime, but the phrase, just like the last time, got me and I became numb, and kept quiet as the words rang inside my ears. It was wrong for me to assume that my connection with Mary had ended ever since she left me alone at the house which she sold to another person without my knowledge, or without any prior information. The phrase that I heard was similar to the incident which my parents happened to die. Mary, indeed, had killed my parents, but with no evidence, there was nothing that could have been done about it. No, this can't be her. I tried to reassure myself, please help me. The lady pleaded again. I suggested that she contacts a good lawyer to defend herself and that it would be her best interest to give herself to the police station. The lady denied it and kept stating that she should just help me at any cost because she committed the crime in order to defend herself from an abusive boyfriend. Uh, I can't. I blatantly told her and asked her to leave my house. Then... All at once, the lady became violent and starts screaming, I'm Mary, your long-lost sister. You need to help me. Do you understand? A ghastly whiteness spread amongst my face. I stared at Mary with a grim and shuddering fascination. I was no longer weak and naive like I was before. Oh no. She must have assumed me the old self, but now I was a judge. Who gave justice to those seeking... It would be wrong for her to think I would not stand up for myself. With my eyes glued amongst the lady without uttering a word, she jumped on top of me and tried to attack me with her long, sharp nails. Thanks to my husband Anthony that I learned a few army tricks. <laughs> that helped me to combat her. I pushed Mary to the ground and immediately called the cops who arrived almost instantly. I told them about how she attacked me, had run away from the crime site after committing a murder. I will not spare you, just understand. Mary tried to threaten me, and as soon as Mary and the cops left, my heart began to palpitate rapidly. Sweat dripping uncontrollably down from my forehead, and my hands were starting to get sweaty. My throat even started to tighten, and it felt really hard to swallow my own spit. I had become face to face with my abuser, who was the reason for all the trauma and pain that I've ever suffered in my life. It wasn't easy to deal with it, and when Anthony came back home, he was shocked to find me crouched in the corner of the room with my hands trembling. He rushed towards me but didn't ask what was wrong. He just hugged me and told me that he would be there for me no matter what. 
Gut-wrenching sobs tore my chest apart, and Anthony patted my back and reassured me that I will be fine. I understood that he indeed was right, and after an hour I felt even stronger. I caught up the cops and asked about Mary. I despise calling her my sister. They told me that she was constantly asking the cops to call me. I made the decision that I would not do anything regarding Mary's case. The next morning, I walked to the court. I glanced at the case listings for the day and came across the name Mary Antonio. As much as I dreaded being face to face with Mary, not because I was scared of her, but due to the build up rage inside of me, it seemed as though my destiny wanted me to confront her. I had no other option. I had to take Mary's case. I felt strong and powerful that day, unlike yesterday, and as soon as Mary came up to court, I glared at her. She had that same anger and fury. She was unable to hire a lawyer, so a government attorney was issued to her. Quote, Everything that you say will be used against you, and you will have the right to remain silent and refuse to answer questions. I remarked. Mary rolled her eyes at me and demanded to be set free on bail. It's true. Mary was a murder suspect, and there's no evidence against her. However, I rejected to set her on bail on the grounds that the evidence may tamper with if she's set free. That night, when I got back home, the light at the front door wasn't turned on. It was very unlikely because Anthony always turns it on. As I sat my foot inside the house, someone grabbed me by my arms and taped my mouth shut. You need to set Mary free or else I'll frame you for accepting a bribe. A man uttered. I could see his face even though he was at a distance and before I could do anything he ran away. I finally got rid of the mouth tape and ran to turn on the lights and my husband was tied up to the ground. This is too much. I'm not sitting here getting scared. Well, we need to track down the man to get this thing over with and I uttered in utmost anger. I've never accepted bribes from anyone, so there was nothing that I should be scared of. The man must be someone close to Mary, and my husband opinionated. Anthony contacted a few of his friends from the FBI, and we were finally able to track that man down. He was Mary's former employee, Thomas. We were even lucky enough to get the man's number, so we contacted Thomas and made plans to meet him regarding Mary's case. I told the man that I might be able to set her free. So the man arrives at our location and he had arrived with a gun in his hand. My husband's an ex-army man, so he was allowed to legally carry a gun that he always had on him. So he had that himself as well that night. Well, there was a gunfight between the two where the men yelled that if I don't set Mary free because of the murder she committed, he will kill my husband and I. Thankfully, everything was recorded in a video clip, and the next morning, it was once again Mary's hearing. I presented the court with the evidence that I've collected and was able to send her off to prison. Not just a normal prison, but a maximum security prison until the end of her time. Well, after a few years, I decide it's time to go meet her at the prison. I could tell she had not changed a bit even after staying in the prison, but I finally got the nerve to ask for that apology. The apology I deserve for the years of abuse and trauma. The child inside me was cheering with pride because the old man could have never done that. Even though I cleared out everything, the bad memories will forever stay with me. But... I've promised myself that when I have children, I will relive my childhood with theirs and shall make new happy memories that'll definitely override the bitter memories of my past. I cannot believe the actions of OP's sister. Guys, this story was absolutely insane. But there was a lot of comments from the post, and they're saying, hey, there's no way this story's real. She would have got caught so long ago. Besides that, there was a lot of red flags about this story that makes it a little suspicious, maybe a little fishy. What do you guys think? Was this story fabricated or could it possibly be real? I mean, I have seen some news articles about some way creepier stories than this one. 
Let me know your thoughts about that, guys. Drop it down below in the comment section. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed. Have a fantastic day, and I will see you tomorrow.